So welcome today to the Holiday Gratitude Flow class. Um, the holidays are approaching. For some of us, maybe they're already here. It depends on when you see this actual video. But the holidays remind us that um, there's so, it's a lot of festivities. There's a lot of things to engage with and entertain, um, which can be fun and festive. But at the same time, it can also bring up a lot of challenge, a lot of stress old wounds and tensions. So we want to be really mindful about how we go forward into the holidays grounded in our center. So I've designed the sequence. It's very straightforward and simple, but challenging. Um, so that it's an opportunity to get a well-rounded practice to bring you to your center so that you can show up to all of your um, events grounded in your truth, energized and ready to have fun. So we're starting today in a really simple, mild heart opener with two blankets. So if you're at home and you don't have blankets, um, yoga blankets, you can really use something around the house. You can use towels. And so Mark's going to be doing everything full out, and Liz is going to be modifying some of the postures. So getting yourself situated on a blanket or a bolster if you have that at home, just let your arms roll open and let your palms face up. And as your palms face up towards the ceiling, towards the heavens, it's really an opportunity to receive, first and foremost, what you're grateful for. Yeah, because it's very easy in our culture to look at what's wrong, what isn't working, to compare ourselves to others. And this is an opportunity before you even begin your yoga, your asana practice, to really set that intention of what am I grateful for? So as you lie down, you get really comfortable on those blankets, begin to close your eyes and just tap into the quality of your breath. And it's that transition of taking us to those inner spaces where sometimes it can be a little less comfortable and the busyness can keep us very distracted. So taking these moments to center. So take an inhale, full deep breath. And as you exhale, let it go through the mouth. And as you let that ah, let the support of those blankets be there for you, increasing um, a little more stability. And as you begin to tap into your breath, your ujjayi breath, it really signals the mind to, to, to quiet, to go inside, to honor where you are in your life and in your practice. So take a few rounds of that ujjayi breath, that soft whispering breath, that inhale, and that exhale. And bringing in a deep sense of appreciation for the willingness to show up on your mat to explore, to have fun, to go into deep spaces that are not comfortable, and that running that full gamut and that full expression of life. So again, take another inhale together. Inhale, fill yourself up, side ribs, back body, and then let it go. <sighs> nice. And then from here, just bring the soles of the feet onto the floor, and then just begin to press yourself up off your blankets. And as you do this, since you have the two blankets, it's really a nice way to sit up um, onto them so you have a little bit more support. So Mark's going to stay where he is. That's fine. And then what you're going to do is stack your blankets mm -hmm, and then bring your sit bones onto those blankets and crossing your shin bones. Good. And take a moment, close your eyes. And as you feel your sitting bones rooted in the earth, into the blankets, feel the length of your spine. And then spin your palms up towards the ceiling. And then take your hands to your heart in Anjali Mudra. And just take a moment with your eyes closed, dropping into that stillness. Again, what are you grateful for? Just like we thread the breath throughout our practice, we thread this intention of gratitude. And it could actually be something that's really challenging, something that's confronted you to grow and to expand. So it's a very personal practice. And Whatever you're grateful for, let's just offer that intention of letting it flow and letting it expand. No judgment, just expression. And we'll open this practice with an om. So take a deep breath. your hands down and open your eyes. Just make your way to your hands and your knees and you're going to set up for cat cow. So you're going to move your blankets to the side and you're going to bring your shoulders right above your wrists and your shins are hip distance. 
And as you spread your fingers and ground your knuckles, inhale, just reaching your sternum forward. And as you exhale, draw your belly button in and round between your shoulder blades. So those of you that practice a lot at home, you know this really well. As you inhale, you just want to get into the spine, get that mobility. And as you exhale and round, we don't want to be rigid in life, and we don't want to be rigid in our practice. So again, as you inhale, reaching the sternum, letting the shoulder blades melt down, a little arch. And then as you exhale, the belly button draws in, the tailbone lengthens towards the navel. And just do one more like that with your breath. Inhale. Good, and then exhale. And from here, come to a neutral spine. So you're not arching or tucking. You're probably going to have to walk your hands a couple inches forward. And as you look down, get a nice, strong foundation. Hands are shoulder distance. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, and shift back into Adho Mukha Svanasana. So as you transition into that downward facing dog, we all have different bodies. We come to the mat with different challenges. So I always say take a little time to fidget. Right? Do those little movements if you need to swivel your hips or pedal your heels. Right. So as you inhale, shift forward to plank pose and bring your shoulders right above your wrists. And we're gonna take a few breaths here. And as you pause, looking down slightly, but do keep your neck long, your breath smooth. Feel your hands grounded. You wanna take an inhale. And then as you exhale, you're gonna lower halfway down chaturanga. So notice the shoulders go slightly forward and they only lower the height of the elbows. Good, press straight back up to plank pose. And then the thighs draw you back into downward facing dog. And starting to build a little bit of heat, inhale, come forward to plank pose. The roots of the thighs lift, the hands ground, lower halfway down chaturanga. Press straight back up to plank pose. Nice, and then downward facing dog. And then again, inhale, come forward to plank pose. This time as you lower to chaturanga, pause and hover. Take an extra breath, if you got it in you, and then drop all the way down to the floor. Good, uncurl your toes and lengthen your legs. From here, you're gonna interlace your fingers behind your back. And as you interlace your fingers, you can always use a strap at home. So you spread your collarbones and you inhale, take your hands towards your heels and begin to peel your chest up off the floor. Now notice if you're sticking your chin out, draw, gently draw the chin in. You don't want to crank the, at the back of the neck. Begin to look towards your right and just stretch your neck out. And then take the gaze towards the left. And then take the gaze towards the center. And as you inhale, maybe you lift a little bit higher and then exhale and lower. And then interlace your hands the opposite way. Mm -hmm. So opposite thumb on top. And notice that one side's a little tighter than the other. Spread your collarbones, inhale, take your hands towards your heels, peeling your chest up off the floor. The inner thighs are spiraling. The back opening, strengthening, feeling that heat build. Stay lifted, just release the interlace, bring your hands by your floating ribs. Have your elbows line up right over your wrists. And as you inhale, then you're gonna press yourself off the floor into upward facing dog. You want your whole, all your thighs to lift. Mm -hmm. Spread your collarbones. Take your chest through the gateway of your arms. Take one more inhale. Now the sternum rises. Maybe the gaze goes up. And then exhale, nice downward facing dog. And then from downward facing dog, look towards the front of your mat. Begin to bend your knees and step one foot forward, then the other. And then bring your feet together. As you inhale, come to a flat back. As you exhale, fold that breath out. Inhale, ground through the feet and reach your arms up overhead. And as you exhale, take your hands to your heart center into Anjali Mudra. And pause here in Tadasana. So this really simple mountain pose that we do in our practice all the time, just really grounding, grounding our energy. And at the same time, with your hands in Anjali Mudra, being grateful for all of the strength that you have in your life, in your practice, all the support system that surrounds you. Again, it's really important to be mindful of the things and the abundance that that, that we have, that are going on in our life. Rather than what's not working, what is working? Come back to that intention you set and carry that with you throughout this Surya Namaskara A series. So as you inhale, release your arms, spin your palms open, float your arms overhead on that breath. And as you exhale, fold it out, keep the lift of your thighs. And as you inhale, come up onto your fingertips, reach your sternum forward, bend your knees, step back to plank pose. From plank pose, shoulders right above your wrists, lower halfway down to that chaturanga. And as you inhale, lengthen your legs and come into upward facing dog, spread your collarbones, sternum rises, exhale, downward facing dog. Nice. And then taking a moment here in this down dog, 
looking back at your feet that they're nice and parallel in hips distance. And you do want to feel those outer triceps gently wrapping back so you feel the width of your shoulders. At the same time, ground down through the inner line of your hand, your thumb and your index finger. And as you inhale, draw the hips back. At the end of the breath, come up onto the balls of your feet, bend your knees, looking forward. You can either step or jump to the front of your mat. As you inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, root through the feet, float your arms overhead, come up. And as you exhale, take your hands to your heart center. Good. Inhale with the breath, sweep the arms overhead. And as you exhale, then just folding that breath out. And as you inhale, reach your sternum forward. Bend your knees, plant your palms, step or jump lightly to that chaturanga. Beautiful. And as you inhale, melt the shoulder blades forward to the front of the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. So as we move through these sun salutations, building that heat, bringing in that devotional part of our practice, right? we do want to align our bones. We want to work with our muscles in the most optimal way, but we don't want to forget that we are humans having this soulful experience and to carry that throughout the practice. And that idea of appreciation for the simplest little things makes this practice so rewarding and so fulfilling. So as you inhale, stretch back. At the end of the breath, looking forward, step or jump to the front of your mat. And as you inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up to the top. And as you exhale, taking your hands to your heart, Anjali Mudra. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, folding that breath out. Inhale, reaching your heart forward. Bend your knees, plant your palms, step or jump, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Make sure the shoulders are right over your wrists. And as you exhale, downward facing dog. And then from down dog this time, inhale, float your right leg up behind you. So you're coming into that three-legged dog, but keep your hips square. So as you look back, all five toes towards the floor, you really want to firm that outer left hip in. Mm -hmm. And then come up onto the ball of your left foot. Get really high. And then let your left heel drop down so you feel the stretch of your calf and your Achilles. Again, inhale, come up onto the ball of the foot. Now shift forward to plank pose. Bring your shoulders right over your wrists. And pause for a moment with your leg extended behind you. And then from here, now draw your knee to your nose and round between your shoulder blades. Feel the scooping of the belly, that cat's breath that we just did a few minutes ago. Now stay in plank pose, straighten your right leg. And as you stay in plank pose, look slightly forward. Now either hover, this can be enough, or lower halfway down, chaturanga. Press straight back up to plank pose. Draw your knee to your nose. And then inhale, now stretch back into that three-legged dog. And as you exhale, step forward, bring the right foot forward between your hands. And stay on your fingertips just for a breath. Really set this up so your right knee is above your ankle, your inner left thigh is spiraling up towards the ceiling, and then as you inhale, come up into a crescent pose. So just really working first the alignment of the pose, building from the ground up so that right knee is over your ankle, you're on the ball of your back foot. Put a little bend in your back leg. Take your hands to your hips. Now as you take your hands to your hips, feel the frontal hip bones lifting up. And as you feel those frontal hip bones lifting up, see if you can facilitate that tailbone lengthening. Now from here, the pelvis is neutral, it's stable. Bring your arms into a cactus shape or field goal, whatever works for you. <laughs> Some people like field goal. And then as you inhale, there's this cat-cow sensation you want to have. So as you inhale, you're going to draw the shoulder blades forward, a little arch in that upper back. And as you exhale, draw your belly button in and round between your shoulder blades. And again, isolating the upper chest. Inhale, draw the shoulder blades in. As you exhale, belly button and round. And one more time, inhale, now pause. So the shoulder blades are drawing in. Keep that. Soften your floating ribs. Feel your side waist expand, back body expand. Now from the pit of the belly, begin to straighten your back leg. Extend your arms up towards the ceiling. Have your palms face each other, keeping those arms in external rotation. And as you, if you can feel from your navel, everything's growing. Take one more breath. Maybe the sternum goes up and maybe the gaze and the palms press. Nice, hands down to the floor. Step your right foot back to plank pose. And then from here, lower down to that chaturanga. And feel free to skip it at any time. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And as you inhale, float your left leg up behind you. And pause. Come way up into the ball of your right foot. 
And as you come up into the ball of that right foot, maybe you lift the root of your left thigh a little higher, keep that lifted and drop your right heel down, stretch the back of your leg. And then inhale, come up into the ball of that foot, the right foot. Now shift forward to plank pose. Keep your leg extended behind you just for a breath. Mm -hmm. Now draw your knee to your nose, and as you do this, feel the rounding between your shoulder blades, your hips and your shoulders are on the same level. Great. Stay in plank, just straighten your left leg. Look slightly forward so you feel the width of your collarbones. Now it's fine to hover here or perhaps lower halfway down, chaturanga. Press straight back up to plank pose. Draw your knee to your nose. And then from here, inhale, stretch back into that three-legged dog. And as you exhale, step your foot all the way through between your hands. As you step through, left knee over ankle, stay on your fingertips, really organize that you have that foundation, and then inhale, come up into crescent pose. And as you come up into this crescent pose, put a little bend in your back leg. Yeah, and like they did the first time, hands on the hips, so you really can feel, it's a way to, on your body, kinesthetically organize your pelvis so it's square. One hip is not lifting higher than the other, so check in. For most of us, the left hip needs to drop. And then bring your arms back into that field goal cactus shape. So keeping this really grounded, moving into the upper torso, inhale, shoulder blades draw forward. And as you exhale, a little bit of rounding, floating ribs draw in, navel. And then inhale, so it's that cat-cow sensation. Exhale and round, so you're isolating your upper body. And as you inhale, now draw the shoulder blades in, really emphasize this. But then neutralize that by inflating your side ribs. Now bring your breath into the back body. Draw your navel in. Begin to straighten your back leg. Begin to reach up through your arms. Palms face each other. Your shoulder blades are assisting you in this upward rotation. Maybe the gaze goes up, palms press, and then take the hands to the floor. Step your left foot back, and from here, lower down to your chaturanga. Nice. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then from down dog, inhale, stretch back. At the end of the breath, you wanna come way up under the balls of your feet. Bend your knees, get your hips low. Looking forward, step or jump to the front of your mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. And as you inhale, bend your knees into chair pose, Utkatasana. Just pause for a couple breaths. Mm -hmm. And the tendency is to kind of overarch the lower back. You don't want to tuck either. You want to lengthen your tailbone. As you draw the pit of the belly in, extending dynamically through your arms, take one more breath and then rise up to standing, hands to your heart center. Nice, you guys. And moving into Surya Namaskara B, inhale, bend your knees, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward, straighten your legs. Inhale, flat back. Bend your knees, step or jump, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. At the end of the breath, without lifting your leg, step your right foot forward, use that belly strength. Place the outer edge of your left foot down, line up heel to heel. Inhale, rise up to warrior one. So you don't want those feet over cross, they're separated. Take your hands down to the floor. Step your right foot back, and then as you lower down to your chaturanga, take some time. Inhale, upward dog. Nice, exhale, downward facing dog. Then step your left foot forward, lining up heel to heel. Inhale, rise up to Virabhadrasana one. And then as you exhale, take the hands down. Step your left foot back, and then lower to your chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Nice, exhale, down dog. Okay, and then just pausing a couple breaths in this down dog, noticing the effects of your sun salutation, Surya Namaskar B, really connecting to that light inside. Especially in the fall and the winter months, there's less light. It's easier to go into those darker spaces. So this is a way to keep that solar energy alive. It helps clear out some of the negative stuff that can build up so that we stay grounded and connected in our truth. So as you inhale, stretch back. At the end of the breath, looking forward, step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend your knees, chair pose, Utkatasana. And as you exhale, press up to standing, take your hands to your heart center into Namaste. Again, inhale, bend your knees, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, reach your heart forward. Bend your knees, step or jump, Chaturanga. Inhale, Ordva Mukha Svanasana, that's your up dog. Exhale, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Stepping your right foot forward, place the outer edge of your left foot down. Inhale, big breath up in Virabhadrasana one. And then as you exhale, ride that breath down, step it back, and from here, lower down through Chaturanga. 
Inhale, Ordva Mukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha. Step in your left foot forward, place the outer edge of your right foot down. Inhale, rise up to Virabhadrasana one. And then as you exhale, take your hands down to the floor. Step your left foot back and lower through your Chaturanga. Inhale, Ordva Mukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha. And pause in this down dog. Okay. So as you pause in the down dog, especially if your breath starts getting a little more erratic or um, forced or rushed, see if you can create that balance, that samavritti, even inhales, even fluid exhales, heart overhead in this mild inversion, really quieting that noise, listening to what your heart needs. Those internal spaces sometimes get so overlooked, and that's the beauty of this practice, to quiet all the excess noise. And Lord knows during the holidays, there's a lot more to attend to. So attending to what you need right here helps you really find that grace and that balance. So as you inhale, stretch back. At the end of the breath, looking forward, step or jump. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend your knees, Utkatasana. And as you exhale, come up to standing, hands to your heart. Pause for a moment with your hands in your heart center. And you may want to close your eyes. Again, what's that intention you set? What are you grateful for? Right here, right now. And then this next round, let that be devotional and really honoring that abundance and that appreciation that you have um, for your life. So when you're ready, begin to open your eyes. Inhale, bend your knees, chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, making that an offering of your heart. Bend your knees, step or jump, finding that core strength. Inhale, softening any place that's dark or resistant. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right foot forward, left foot seal it down. Inhale, rise up to that warrior spirit inside. Exhale, and then as you ride that breath down, step it back, move your way through that vinyasa, following your breath, letting it lead you. And then when you're ready, second side, left foot forward, right foot roots. Inhale, rise up, honoring that strength, outer and inner. Take your hands to the floor. Step your left foot back and make your way through that chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward dog. Nice. Now from down dog, I think we could all use a little pause, a little support in life. So come down onto your knees, and you're going to come into child's pose. You're going to take this block and put it under your third eye center. So as you come into child's pose, big toes together, knees wide apart usually feels best. And have the block the long way so that you can breathe easily. And let your, yeah, arms are forward, but just let them relax for a moment. And let your hips just soften. Mm -hmm. Feel the support of your third eye center. And then keeping your hips as they are, and your arms are extending, bring a little bit more energy now into your arms, yeah. So what I want you to do is lift your fingertips up off the floor and scooch the heels of your hands as dynamically as you can towards the front of the mat. And as you do this, I want you to feel your outer triceps wrapping down mm -hmm, towards the floor. So you'll feel the width of your shoulder blades and your scapula assisting you in that upward rotation of your arms. And as you do this, now I want you to place your hands onto the floor, keep your fingertips and lift everything else up. So as you kind of cup your hands, I want you to lift your forearms, you're rebounding that energy up through your forearms. So look how dynamic, your arms are not extending just from your shoulders, but you can feel your whole serratus engage. Now keeping that much engagement in your arms, place your palms evenly down and keep the forearms lifting away from the floor. Beautiful. Now from here, sit back onto your heels and you're gonna take the block between your hands, so gonna, it's going to look like this. You're going to come into forearm plank. So you want that block to be between the thumb and the index finger, and you want your forearms rolling down, pronating down, and you want your forearms like railroad tracks. So first you're going to start in forearm plank. You can extend your legs back behind you. And ideally, we want to get your hips on the same level as your shoulders. If they need to be a little higher, that's fine, but that's what we're working for. And notice what tends to get light. Usually we start doing a call the lobster claw hands. So you got to spread <laughs> lobster claws. I like jazz hands. <laughs> so you want to spread those fingers and root them down. And then as you roll your forearms down, you wrap your triceps to the back of your mat and feel the roots of your femur bones We're lifting because that will really help support you in this pose. Nice, you guys. Now from here, begin to walk your feet towards your elbows. You're going to step 
up and forward into dolphin. And notice as they do this, as they bring their hips closer, there's no rounding in the upper back. So if you tend to round, you might need a belt around or a strap around your upper arms um, to give you a little more support. So as you keep doing, maybe you walk your feet in a little bit further and dynamically reaching that energy up through your sit bones, beautiful. And it's, a, it's an intense posture, yeah. Nice, and then from here, you're gonna slowly make your way onto your shins. Come down for a moment, move the block aside, but don't let it get too far away because you're gonna need it. <laughs> and then make your way into downward facing dog. All right, so coming back into the standing poses, just a real kind of nice forward flow. At the end of the breath, step your right foot forward to the front of the mat. And as you inhale, you're gonna come up to warrior one. Take your hands to your heart, open up into warrior two. So you heel toe your right foot to the left, look down and now you're a heel to arch alignment. Left toes are spinning slightly forward. And those of you that watch some of my classes, I really love to build the pose from the ground up because the foundation is gonna feed and inform everything that's going on up here. So once you have that foundation, heel arch alignment, left foot spinning, Forward on a diagonal, just a smidge more. Mark the toes more forward and the heel back a little bit. So this facilitates that left hip slightly coming forward. Good. And as you dig your right heel into the mat, lengthen your tailbone away from your lower back. Now remember when we had those cactus arms, can you feel a little more breath in your extend and open your side waist and your back body? That's really challenging. As you broaden your collarbones, just spin your palms up towards the ceiling and reach your arms overhead. And as you reach your arms overhead, it's those otita hasta arms that we did a moment ago in that child's pose. So dynamically, as the tailbone lengthens from the pit of the belly, you're reaching up through your arms. Beautiful. And as you feel that long line of energy, now begin to take your hands to your heart center into Anjali Mudra. And you may want to just close your eyes for a moment. Feel the strength of your legs supporting you. Feel that thread of gratitude, your intention. And I love the idea that these postures are they're wonderful, but they're meaningless without the intention, without the breath, because that's what gives it life. We're just going to be a pile of bones and muscles. It's the life. And that's what we want to bring into all the things that we do and all the things that we want to share in these holidays. So from here, extend your arms out, full warrior two, flip your right palm up, inhale, take a moment in your reverse warrior, fan and expand and open up those right ribs, take one more breath, and then arms up and over, hands to the floor. This is your vinyasa, step your right foot back. Now, either choose to go through chaturanga up dog or go straight into downward facing dog. So there may be days when you feel a little less energetic. It's fine to always skip, take breaks. At the end of the breath, step your left foot forward. And inhale, come up to warrior one. So in warrior one, you're heel to heel. There's a clear transition, hands to your heart, open up into warrior two. So you heel to your left foot to the right. And as you line up heel to arch, you just want to make sure that right foot is spinning forward on a diagonal, about 10 degrees. And as you set that foundation, you're going to feel that left buttock bone drawing underneath you as the right thigh bone draws back. And as you do this, you want to feel a deep bend in that front leg and that knee is still tracking, always tracking over the ankle and the second and third toe. And then as you feel the side ribs expand, bringing some breath into the back body, feel the width across your collarbones as you reach through your thumbs. And feel the width even across your shoulder blades as you reach through your baby fingers. Good. Now as you spin your palms up towards the ceiling, begin to reach your arms overhead, coming back into those otita hasta arms. And then take your hands to your heart center. And just take a moment here in gratitude. Whatever that means to you, whatever that conjures up. Being, um, having the strength, the inner strength to kind of just sit still to be present, to bear witness. And then from here, extend your arms out, full warrior two. Flip your left palm up, inhale, reverse your warrior. Right hand is light, fan and expand those left ribs. Take one more breath and then release it, arms up and over, hands to the floor. Nice, you guys, step it back, down dog or vinyasa. So always know from in your practice to just take care of yourself. Okay. At the end of the breath, step your right foot forward. And as you inhale, you're going to come up to warrior one, same transition. And then you're going to take your hands to your heart, open up into warrior two. 
And then from warrior two, slowly begin to straighten your right leg. Now before you move into your triangle pose, I want you to see if you can really feel the firming of your quad from your kneecap up into your right hip socket. Really lift that quad. And then take an extra breath, begin to shift your pelvis as you deepen this right hip crease. Notice how much Mark's hips and pelvis are shifting. Now he takes his hand to, for some of us, the floor, but for many of us, a hand on a block is gonna be a lot healthier. Right? It just kind of depends. And again, no comparison, no right or wrong. It's what works for you. How are you going to extend those line of energies? Energy. So as you press down on the bone of the right toe, that knee and that quad are strongly lifting up. The calf can move towards the shin if you tend to hyperextend. The root of the left thigh bone draws back. And where I see a lot of rounding for a lot of folks, a lot of students, is the left side of the ribs. So you want to engage and firm your left oblique so you feel the extension of your right. Nice. And then relaxing near the base of your neck. Spread your collarbones, and as you reach up, feel that navel draw in for that stability, and then begin to look down. You're going to bend your right leg. You can take your block with you, and you're going to step up into Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon Pose. And as you make that transition, keep sure, make sure that that right foot is still pointing dead ahead. The bone of the right toe has got to ground down as that arch and ankle, and everything is lifting up to feed. This is what's feeding the pose, and you're aligning the bones in a really optimal way, and then you can, you can hold it. You feel that stability as you expand and open up energetically and reach through that top arm. Beautiful. And then as you feel more stable, maybe begin to take your drift to your gaze side, maybe even up towards your left fingertips. Nice, you guys. And then take one more breath. Very slowly, you're going to begin to bend your right leg slowly. And almost think of lifting your left leg a little higher. Extend through that left foot and then begin to place it down into warrior two. So as you transition into that warrior two, take one more breath, and then release it, arms up and over, hands to the floor. You're gonna step back, either down dog or vinyasa. Nice. And then second side. From here, step your left foot forward. Inhale, come up to warrior one. Take your hands to your heart, open up into warrior two. From warrior two, inhale, straighten your front leg. Pause before you move into triangle pose. So you wanna feel that left buttock rolling underneath you, the bone of the left toe grounded, and even here, from the knee up into that hip socket, firm and lift that quad. Then begin to deepen this hip crease, shift your pelvis, right? Extend those bottom ribs, and then take your hand onto your block or to the floor or the shin, whatever's working for you. And as you feel those long lines of energy, reaffirm that firmness in that left leg, the grounding of that left foot. And as you inhale, the collarbones broaden, the shoulder blades draw in, but those floating ribs soften. And remember that three-dimensional breath, inflating the side ribs, bringing some breath into the back body. And from here, you're gonna to begin to look down, bend your front leg, keep that knee tracking straight over that second and third toe as you step up into Ardha Chandrasana. And making these transitions as graceful as possible. And if you fall, you fall. You come back and you do it again. It's no big deal. It's just a pose. And once you find that pose, you want to keep that awareness of that left foot grounded. That thigh has got to lift up. This is where you're drawing energy up from the earth, that strength. And then there's that, once we, you have that shtira, then you have the sukha. The groundedness gives you the ability to make it light and effortless. It's that balancing of those dualities, right? So if you're feeling light, maybe begin to look side or up. And if you need that grounding, just stay looking down. Good. Take another breath. And then from here, begin to bend your front leg. Slowly keep that right leg lifted until you step back, tap down, find your warrior two. And then this time, you're actually going to straighten your left leg. As you straighten your left leg, lower your arms for a moment. Turn your left leg in so you're facing the right side of your mat. And you want to have your feet nice and parallel so the outer edges of your feet line up with your mat. So we're moving to Prasarita A. And Liz is going to take a block under the crown of her head. So as you inhale, thighs firm, sternum rises. As you exhale, you want to hinge from your hips, fold forward. Take a pause here with your hands right underneath your shoulders. Inhale, lengthen and spread your collarbones. And then as you exhale, begin to walk your hands back between your feet. And you want to think in Prasarita A of those Chaturanga arms. So hands are shoulder distance. You can walk a 
back just a smidge. Mm -hmm. The forearms are moving toward each other. If you have the, the block under the crown of the head, it's just a nice way to bring some grounding. And um, you do want to think of lifting your shoulders away from the floor and keep the width in the shoulder blades. Good. And let this board bend, just be calming and cooling to your nervous system. If you're working really hard, we need these moments to pause and assimilate all of the activity. It's taking a moment of stillness. And then as you inhale, come up onto your fingertips, come to a flat back, take your hands to your side hips, and then as you inhale, rise up to standing. Nice. And then step or jump your feet together and make your way back to the front of your mat, Tadasana, and take your hands to your heart center. And you know we do this a lot in our practice. We come back to Tadasana, we come back to our center. So take a moment to feel what that is for you. And then as you inhale, float your arms up overhead. Exhale, folding that breath out. Inhale, flat back. Bend your knees, either step or jump, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. At the end of the breath, step your right foot forward. Inhale, come up to warrior one. Take your hands to your heart, open up into warrior two. And then flip your right palm up, inhale, reverse that warrior. Get very light on that left hand. And then you're gonna come up and over and take your right hand to the inside of your right foot on your block if you would like to use that block. And pause here, let that left hip come gently forward as you draw this right sit bone underneath you. Good. And then sweep your left arm behind your back and you can take either the half bind, so hand to the inside of that right thigh, and rolling that thigh open, or you can begin to come into the full wrap, the full bind. So Liz is doing this variation, which is gonna be plenty for a lot of us. If you wanna go into the full bind like Mark, make sure if you're doing the full bind though that the right hip booty is not sticking out, the left shoulder is collapsing. You wanna maintain that integrity of the pose so that you get those optimal lines of energy. And then facilitating that little bit of twist, that heart opening, shoulder blades melt in, nice. And then from here, take your right hand down to the floor if you took the bind. Reach your left arm up towards the ceiling. As you look down at your right fingertips, inhale, come up into warrior two. Flip your right palm, inhale, reverse that warrior. Fan and expand those right ribs. Take one more breath and then release it. Arms up and over, take your hands to the floor. Now as you step back, either down dog or lower through your chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And then step in your left foot forward. Inhale, come up to warrior one. Taking your hands to your heart, opening up into that warrior two. Flipping your left palm, inhale, reverse the warrior. And then come up and over, take your hand to the inside of your left foot on your block. Reach your right arm up for a moment. Draw that left sit bone underneath you. And as you draw that left sit bone underneath you, that right hip will come slightly forward so you're not squaring your hips. Sweep your right arm behind your back. And as you do this, your hand comes to the inside of your left thigh, which helps to encourage that external rotation. And if that's going well and you want a little bit more, then you slide your left arm underneath and you take the full bind. But notice how Mark's doing it. Every, he hasn't lost the integrity of the pose. It looks just like Liz's, he's in the full bind. Sometimes we go into a more advanced I just not even say advanced, a more difficult variation, um, we lose the pose. So what's advanced for you is really honoring where your body is and what you need in this moment and how it's gonna connect you to your intention. From here, take your left hand down, stretch your right arm up towards the ceiling as you look down at your left fingertips. Inhale, come back up into warrior two. Flip your left palm up, inhale, reverse the warrior. Notice the difference if it's a little more open and then release it, arms up and over, hands to the floor, step it back and either lower through chaturanga or straight to your downward facing dog. Nice. Now from downward facing dog, come down onto your shins again. We're coming back, back into plank pose on your forearms. So if you're not so excited about that, but, <laughs> but actually you're not gonna use the block because we're gonna do side plank, which is even more fun. So come onto your forearms and fingers are spread. Make sure that those forearms are nice and parallel like we did earlier. Now from here, you're gonna to roll to the outside of your right foot and you're taking side plank. For most of us, or a lot of us, we can keep the right form facing forward. If you have any injuries or anything, sometimes it's helpful to skip it or take your right form on a diagonal. 
Do keep that left hip coming forward. Lengthen your tailbone away from your lower back as the pit of the belly draws in. Keep that sideways, right sideways lifted. Nice. This is really great to strengthen the obliques. Take one more inhale and then come back onto your left form. And as you transition onto your left form, roll to the outside of your left foot and go slow. This is the one that we can roll over to the person behind us. Um, so as you do this, bring that right hip slightly forward. Good. And as that left forearm grounds down, that left bicep is rolling towards the front of the mat. You can always take that left forearm on a diagonal. And as you keep your hips lifting away from the floor, the pit of the belly draws in as the tail lengthens away from the lower back. Nice. You guys take one more breath and then come back onto your right form and pause. Now this time, you're gonna stay on your forearms, so you're gonna bring your hands into prayer. So palms are gonna face each other, but your elbows stay shoulder distance. And then begin to walk your feet towards your elbows. And as you feel the karate chopping down of your forearms, those hands in prayer to remind us what our intention is, what it means together, to mean when we bring our hands together. We use our bodies to express, to dedicate, to even, for some of us, to even pray, right? And that is an offering of gratitude for all of the abundance that we've been given. And how do we share that with our family, with our friends, perhaps even with a stranger, especially during these, this holiday time. So take another breath and then come down onto your knees, your shins, and make your way ha, into downward facing dog. And then from downward facing dog, step your right foot to the front of the mat, line up heel to heel for warrior one. Okay, and stay on your fingertips for a moment. Just look down. You may have to bring your right foot a little further to the right. That left foot spins forward on a very sharp angle, really strong diagonal. That right hip firms into the center line of your mat. And then as you pause here on your fingertips, begin to take your block into your hands. And as you take your block into your hands, you're going to just bring your torso up into Virabhadrasana 1, but rest the block on your right thigh for a moment. Yeah, just pause here. We're going to postpone this. <laughs> so as you rest that block, that right hip draws back. Good. Now take the block between your hands and palm, between your palms, and this time instead of having those jazz hands, have your fingers all the way together like blades, and those blades are pressing into that block. Mm -hmm. And then from here, begin to reach the arms about halfway overhead, and just notice what happens. For most of us, the floating ribs will start to puff out because the shoulders are a little tight or challenged. These guys are really open, but for a lot of us, the shoulders are tight. So you want to work with that and rolling those outer triceps forward, feeling the shoulder blades assist you in this upward rotation, then you find that sweet spot for you. Maybe you reach your arms a little further, but it's fine if you want to keep your arms here. It's going to be different for each and every one of us. And if you feel at any point that you're overarching your lower back or you lost the integrity of the, the breath and the side ribs, then maybe the arms are just come a little too high. So this is an intense pose. If you have a wood block, it's really intense. These are fortunately foam. So extend dynamically through your fingertips. Take one more breath. Maybe begin to look up at your block and be grateful for it. <laughs> and then from here, begin to lower your block to the side. Pause. Take your hands on either side of your right foot. And all you're going to do is step your left foot forward about three to four inches. Straighten your front leg. Take your hands onto your hips. And then as you inhale, come up standing. So you're going to keep your hips and your pelvis aligned just like this and we're going to move into Gomukhasana arms. So at home if you have a strap or a towel you're probably going to want to take that strap which I'm going to hand to Liz and what you're going to do is reach your left arm up overhead, work that external rotation that we've been doing and then take your hand down your back and then you're going to sweep your right arm up and then as you walk your hands up you can clasp your fingers and this is my tight side. We all have a tighter side. And notice, I always notice when I do this, my floating ribs want to puff, so I have to really work the spreading of my right collarbone, the rolling of that left tricep forward. Take a breath here, and then begin to fold forward over your right leg. Now pause when you're about halfway. Commit to pressing the bone of your right toe down, because that's what's going to get light. Lift the knee and the quad up strongly, just like you did in triangle pose, but you're keeping your hips square, and now begin to fold perhaps a little deeper, extending through that left elbow, keeping the width of that right collarbone spiraling the internal rotation of your left leg. And there's even this firming of your side hips that you want to feel so you have that stability that you can extend and really work the opening of the shoulders. Nice. And as you firm your side hips, inhale, come up to standing. Begin to step your left foot forward to Tadasana. Move the strap aside and release your hands. Find that Tadasana hands to your heart, Anjali Mudra. 
And take a moment for your shoulders, even if they're tight, love them. <laughs> That's the only way they get more open. And then as you inhale, float your arms up overhead. Exhale, folding that breath out. Inhale, come to a flat back. And as you bend your knees, step or jump, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good. At the end of the breath, step your left foot forward. Line up heel to heel and stay on your fingertips for a moment. So take a look, make sure your feet are separated. It's not like warrior two, your feet are separated so you're not on a tight rope. Your right foot spins forward on a very sharp angle, diagonal. Left hip firms in. Good, inner right thigh is rolling up towards the ceiling already. Then begin to take your hand, you know, block in between your hands. And then inhale, come up into warrior one. Now start again with your arms facing oh, about halfway, yeah, straight ahead. And have the fingertips together, mm -hmm. so you're really focusing, ha, huh, like little lasers out of your fingertips, good. And as you squeeze that block, tailbone is lengthening, now begin to reach your arms halfway up and find that sweet spot where you're getting that openness in your shoulders and you're working, you're working hard, you just are, this is hard. It's simple, but it's challenging. And it will really reveal those little tight spaces that we all have and then I think what helps shift it and transform it is to be grateful for it, even if it's something that you struggle with, because sometimes those are your best teachers. Okay, so tailbone lengthens, pit of the belly draws in, reach dynamically through those arms. Beautiful, Mark. Take another breath, maybe begin to look up at your block, and then take your hands down and your block to the side. Now hands on either side of your left foot, step your right foot forward about three to four inches, straighten both of your legs. And as you do this, you want to feel that left hip firming in and back, and then press down on the bone of your left toe and then hands to your hips. Inhale, come up. So before you go into the arm variation, feel the stability, you have the foundation, your pelvis is neutral. Now the second side, you're gonna reach your right arm overhead, just like you had in that black. Roll that tricep forward, take your hand down so you're nice and warm in your shoulders and then reach your left arm up. And as you work your hand, you're gonna clasp your fingers. Maybe hold, use that strap so, so you can notice one side's for a lot of us, it's a little tighter than the other, right, Liz? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You just, we work with it. And then you roll your right tricep forward, and you spread your left collarbone, take a deep breath, and begin to hinge from your hips and extend. Then once you find that sweet spot where you're not rounding, you've got all that length, recommit to that left hip firming in and the bone of the left toe grounding, and then perhaps dive in a little deeper. Good. So you're feeling that hamstring stretch, a lift of the belly for support, the openness of your shoulders. And then listening to the rhythm and the sound of your breath. Mm -hmm. Being willing to go into those little areas that are difficult to get into. And when we hold, they become more available. Okay, so firming your side hips, inhale, slowly come up. Now as you come up, step your right foot forward to the front of the mat. Release your hands, strap whatever you have. Come to Tadasana and take your hands to your heart center. Again, take a moment. Okay. As you inhale, float your arms up overhead. As you float your arms up overhead, pause. Now, from here, keep your palms separated uh, apart a little bit, yeah. The feet are all the way together. You're gonna come way up under the balls of your feet. So be willing to have a sense of humor and fall and just, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. That's part of how we grow and learn. So you want to feel like you're pulling those inner thighs together. I always say like you're trying to crack a walnut between your inner thighs. I like that visual. <laughs> and then as your tailbone lengthens, your belly draws in, and you push down on the big toe side of your foot. Streamline, zip that energy through your fingertips. Beautiful. Good. Now you stay up on the balls of your feet. Lower your arms by your side. Staying up on the balls of your feet, begin to hinge from your hips and fold forward halfway just halfway. Notice where the energy shifts or where the weight. Can you take the weight a little more towards the big toe side of your foot? Zip those inner thighs together. Pull your heels up, up, up. Take your hands to the floor and let your heels drop down. Nicely done. And then from here, hop your feet back about a foot. Come down into a squat and you're going to come into Bakasana, crow pose. So you're going to keep the inner line of your feet together. You're going to separate your knees. It's that same kind of lifting action you need in crow. Hands are shoulder distance first and foremost, right? And then make sure they're slightly forward. Begin to walk your knees up onto your outer upper arms, just like Mark is doing here. Then begin to transition the weight slightly forward. Bring the inner line of your feet together. Pull your heels up towards your sit bones. And even if you're kind of not quite there, these are the actions you want to work on. 
Mm -hmm. And then maybe straighten your arms as much as you can. Nice, you guys. Feel that cat's breath, that scooping of the navel, and then either step back or perhaps shoot back through Chaturanga. And then inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay. So from here, come down onto your knees and let's just take a little, little pause, a little, little break. And let this child's pose be really restful and restorative. Yeah, so if you want to bring your arms alongside your body, if you want them forward, yeah. Just let your hips soften. And we're going to move into a little bit of back bending to really kind of complete the sequence. So from here, make your way back into downward facing dog. And from downward facing dog, looking all the way through, when you're ready to the front of the mat, step or jump to a seat. And then go ahead and lie down. Okay, so we're gonna start with bridge pose. And um, Liz is gonna put a block. It's really nice to use a block. I like it this way between my knees. If, you're, if you have smaller hips, you can take it this way between your inner thighs. You kinda have to work with, with, how do you like it, between inner thighs or knees? Thighs, okay, yeah, everyone's a little different. So you wanna make sure, notice that her knees are right over her ankles, her feet are parallel in hip distance, right? So that block's gonna determine if your, um, your feet are hip distance. From here, you're gonna begin to lengthen your tailbone away from your lower back, so you wanna create a little bit of a posterior tilt and then lift your hips up off the floor. And as you lift your hips up off the floor, you wanna dig your heels into the mat. And then from here, begin to interlace your fingers underneath your back and you want to draw your outer upper shoulder underneath you towards the center of your mat, not down, but towards the center. Okay, you want to keep all the cervical curve in your neck. So as you do this, you want to recommit to stamping the inner line of your feet, rolling your inner thighs, internally rotating your thighs down. Lengthen your tailbone away from your lower back. Feel your sternum lift towards your chin. Nice. But your chin doesn't move. Chin keeps moving up towards the ceiling. So your neck, there's, put a little toy car right underneath your neck. Take another breath and then slowly release your hands and roll on down, okay. And then from here, you can either stay at bridge pose if you feel like Ord Vidhanurasana is the direction you wanna go, then you're gonna um, take your hands by your ears, fingertips point forward, and then keep your elbows in. Inhale, you're gonna come to the crown of the head, but notice when he comes to the crown of the head, there's a he brings it forward. So there's a tripod, right? His head is not by his hands. The elbows draw towards each other, the arm bones draw into the sockets, the shoulder heads lift, then belly button straight up towards the ceiling and come into the full pose. Or you stay in bridge pose, right? And notice as he comes up, as Mark's coming up, the challenge here for all of us Oops, I kicked the block. Yeah, he already fixed it. Toes in a little bit. So you really want to work the internal rotation of your thighs. Good. And as you work the internal rotation of your thighs, your lower back is broad. Your SI joint is not compressed. It is happy. There's a nice even curve in your back bend. Maybe straighten your arms as much as you can, rolling your biceps to the front of the mat. Stay lifted in your bridge pose. Take one more breath. And then slowly tuck your chin. Come to your shoulders. Release the interlace. Let that go. And for a moment, just let your feet separate as wide as your mat and let your knees gently knock in. And as you knock your knees in, now hug your knees into your chest. And as you hug your knees into your chest, extend your legs up towards the ceiling. So you wanna have your feet right over your hips. Tendency is to bring them to your head, so bring them a little more forward. Take your hands behind your head, elbows to the side. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, draw your belly button and just lift your tailbone up off the floor and your shoulder blades. And as you inhale, lower your hips down, lower your shoulders for a moment. As you exhale, then tailbone lifts. You wanna lift your hips like an inch off the floor. Mm -hmm. Lift your shoulders, shoulder blades, and then inhale lower, and just move with your breath. So just reversing that curve, bringing in a little bit of that core strength. And notice on the exhalation, it's a really subtle movement that so you wanna keep those heels right over your hips. Nice, you guys. Take one more inhale. Now as you exhale again, tailbone lifts. Now this time, reach your arms up towards the ceiling. Keep your hands right above your shoulders. Mm -hmm. And then see if you can lift everything a little higher and then hug your knees into your chest. Nicely done. And then from here, take a spinal twist. So drop your knees over to the right and roll your left shoulder open. 
And as you do this, feel the relaxing of your left shoulder as you extend your left sit bone away or to actually towards the front of the mat. You may even want to close your eyes. And you know, doing a lot of these big, dynamic, fiery movements helps us really focus and work out where we hold um, stress and tension and open it up so that when we sit still in poses like this, it's easier, it's more accessible, it's more inviting. Right? So as you inhale, draw your knees back to center and twist the opposite way, so knees to the left. And as you roll your right shoulder open and you soften that right collarbone, do feel the extension of your right sit bone to the front of the mat. Take a moment to really luxuriate in the length and the spaciousness in your physical spine, but your energetic. And our willingness to open, to be receptive. I think that's very important and overlooked a lot in even in yoga and asana, especially in very powerful classes, is the willingness to be vulnerable and receptive. That is where so much strength and um, maturity and really groundedness lies. This is our willingness to be still. So as you inhale, draw your knees back to center. And as you hug your knees into your chest, go ahead and rock up and down on your spine a couple times. You can kind of do what feels good, you know? playful part of just rolling up and down and then make your way up to a seat. So now we're going to move into um, a finishing pose of shoulder stand. So as you come into shoulder stand, what you want to do is you have to take your two blankets that we set up with, okay, and you want to take the neat edges, so they're both going to do it because I think they both love. <laughs> I, I personally don't practice ever shoulder stand, and I think that it's very um, important to say that if you have neck issues, you don't want to do this pose unless you're really clear on how to do it, uh, especially with props, okay? So the neat edges line up with the back of the mat, and then the mat, I like to roll it almost to the top so it gives you a nice, firm, stable space to, to pin your shoulders. And then as you lie down onto your blankets, take a moment, especially if you've never done this, to either watch this first or um, take some time to set it up. So your shoulders are supported on the blanket. Your head is on the wood. Okay. You don't want to turn your head once you go up into this pose. It's not good for your neck. Your shoulders should be, they're, I think they're too far off the blanket. You want to have them slid down maybe like a half of an inch because when you bring your legs up and over, they'll slide a little bit. Okay. Now, hands by your hips. You gotta use a little bit of core strength. Begin to draw your knees into your chest and reach your legs up and over into a halasana plow pose for a moment. If this feels funky or weird, come out of it and reset it up. But notice that the shoulders are supported. The curve of the neck is maintained off the blankets. The curve of the neck is not on the blankets. Then like you did in your bridge pose, take a moment to interlace your fingers underneath your back. See if you can draw those outer upper shoulders, really get that rootedness on your upper arms. Then release your hands up onto your back. And when I say high up your back, I mean closest to the floor. Fingertips point up towards the ceiling. So you don't want the roundness in your upper back. You want that supported. And then bring your legs up overhead. If you want, do together or one at a time, yep. And what you want to maintain in your shoulder stand is that you're not rounding into a banana. You have a nice long line of energy. Your shoulders are supported by the blanket, right? The neck is not bearing, there's no weight bearing down on that cervical spine because you can't take it. And a lot of times when we do this, and I see this in class without blankets, I just see people bearing down onto that part of their neck and it's not good. And it, it may be fine for a year or two, but eventually it'll create problems. So once this is set up, then it's putting you into Jalandhara Bandha, which signals the mind, the parasympathetic nervous system, to relax. A lot of our lives, we are very over-adrenalized, and we can literally be ad addicted to our tension because it keeps us distracted. And if we're distracted, and then we don't have to take personal responsibility, and we don't have to feel. And one thing that we need to do in order to really feel gratitude is be willing to feel all parts of who we are. Right? Not just the stuff that's easy and joyful, that's, that's wonderful and a given, but the parts of us that hold s suppression, um, guilt, shame, blame, all the things that are very human. And to be grateful for all those things that challenge us, because everything in life, every experience, every relationship will push us to our edge so that we can see it. And in poses like this that we can soften it. We can refine it, listen to our breath gazing inward, and really finding that deep acceptance and understanding. 
So as you let this pose do the work, feeling the support of the blankets, letting, reversing that flow, that blood flow, taking some time to really nurture and nourish yourself. Okay. You're going to slowly begin to bend your knees, take your feet back overhead into that halasana. And then as you release your hands, very slowly begin to roll down, take a little time. And then once your hips reach the mat, just begin to bend your knees and bring the soles of the feet onto your mat and very slowly begin to scoot yourself back until your shoulder blades are supported on the blanket. So the ridge of the blanket ideally is at the base of your shoulder blades, so right where your bra strap would be. And then you can take your arms into those cactus arms. Mm -hmm. And just close your eyes and just absorb the, the effects of that. Mm -hmm. And then from here, as you bring the soles of the feet back onto your mat, begin to roll over to your right side. And then go ahead and press yourself up. I know it's ready for Shavasana. <laughs> but one more finishing pose. So what you're going to do is unfold your mat and extend it out. And since you have the blankets, what you're going to do is so I'm just going to move these, actually, so you can sit this way. You can put your sit bones up on the blankets, and you, or you can choose not to. Right? And you extend your legs forward into Dandasana. Okay. And as you extend those legs forward into Dandasana, roll the inner thighs down. Feel the grounding of your sit bones. And then inhale, just reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, fold forward, Paschimottanasana. Take an extra breath here. You can go for a little more length, spread your collarbones. And if you're at home and it's really hard to reach your toes, for a lot of us it is, you can always put the, uh, the strap around the balls of the feet. And that way you can really work the elongation, take, taking an extra breath to really get that width and then dive in. And such a powerful pose before we go into our final relaxation. It's very intimate. It's a forward bend of going inward and what that means, not only physically, but um, symbolically. And from here, inhale, slowly begin to roll yourself up. And as you lie down, you're going to take your Shavasana. And since you have these blankets, you can go back into the supported heart opener we started with, or you can simply as you lie down, let your thighs roll open. And our thighs are really powerful, and sometimes they want to grip and hold. So putting a blanket or two across your femur bones is a great way to really ground this pose. Does that feel okay, Mark? OK. Yeah, or, and going back into the mild heart opener. Yeah. So especially when the days are shorter and we have less time, we can feel a little more frantic or we can feel like there's more things to do, and it can really keep us in this heightened state of um, adrenaline. So working through this practice is such a powerful way to release that so that you can lie still and really give yourself the shavasana to nourish you. So with your arms and your hands pointing up towards the ceiling, towards the heavens, take a deep breath. And as you exhale, let it go through the mouth. So let go of any kind of controlled breathing. Go back to your organic breath. One more time, inhale from your toes all the way up your body to the crown of your head. Feel that spaciousness. And as you exhale, let it go. And give yourself this really important, beautiful pose of Shavasana.
gently begin to come back by deepening your breath. Take a little time to move out. And just lingering here for a few more moments. Just begin to wiggle your fingers, your toes. Just gently take one hand, maybe your right hand to your belly, your left hand to your heart. And just take a moment here, reconnecting to that intention that you set, that thread of gratitude that you're weaving throughout your practice. And let that really seal and sink in. At this point of our practice, there's a receptivity, a willingness to really be open to all our truth. And on your next inhalation, just begin to reach your arms overhead, lengthen your legs. Take a nice, long stretch. And then begin to bend your knees, bring the soles of your feet onto the floor, and roll over to your right side. And then begin to press yourself up to a comfortable seat, coming into Sukhasana. And take a moment, your sitting bones grounded, lifting up through the crown of your head, spreading your palms apart, and taking them to your heart center. So really sealing this in, honoring your masculine, your feminine, that oneness, all the abundance, all the fullness, all the experiences in the life that have gotten you to this point. So you can really acknowledge and understand our human side and our spirit. And so let's seal the practice with an ohm. So take a full breath. Oh. With your hands in prayer, just begin to lower your head down and gently lift your head and open your eyes. Namaste. So thank you for joining us for the holiday gratitude flow class. I hope you found it helpful and grounding and nourishing so that you can attend all the experiences and festivities um, in your center and your truth and from that really loving, appreciative, grateful place. Namaste.